This is a new video on property rights as a factor that influences economic growth and economic development. So what are property rights? Property rights are one of the hallmarks of a free society. They grant individuals the right to own something. Free market capitalism is impossible without the right to accumulate and own private property. Property rights enable you to buy and own your own home, should you choose to do that. Property rights also enable you to spend the money that you've earned helping others on things that you want. And in a free society, nobody, not the government, not another private citizen, is allowed to steal the things that you've accumulated. This is what property rights uh, facilitate. So it doesn't matter whether it's an old cricket bat or a rusty old car, private property rights are a key element of a highly developed society. They allow you to work hard, serve others, and accumulate things of value that other people aren't allowed to steal from you. Private property rights also enable people to set up their own businesses and through their own hard work, develop them into something truly huge, such as Ryanair. In a free society, private property rights also mean that entrepreneurs are able to keep the profits that they've earned serving others. Nobody, including the state, is allowed to steal those profits. In free societies where private property rights are respected, enterprise flourishes. Private property rights also apply to intellectual property, such as the written word. Intellectual property rights also apply to music. So in a society where private property rights are upheld, other people, other artists aren't allowed to steal your tunes. Socialists, on the other hand, don't believe in private property rights. Under communism, there was no private ownership. There were no private property rights in a communist society. For example, in Soviet Russia, all businesses were owned by the state. All cars were owned by the state. Everything was owned by the state. There was no private property. All housing was owned by the state. Everybody, in effect, lived in council flats and council houses. You weren't allowed to privately own your own home. Power stations and other forms of infrastructure were also state owned, so no private property there either. As were shops and restaurants. So how can private property rights promote economic development? The first way in which private property rights can promote economic development is via freedom. Uh, private property rights create freedom. Freedom is really important in terms of economic development. In a free society that's based on private property, people have the right to work for things that they alone want to own. Property rights are inextricably linked with personal autonomy, the, the freedom to choose the direction of your own life. As Todaro quite rightly points out, freedom from servitude is a important core factor of economic development. Hayek and Mises also made the link between economic and political freedom. It's not possible to have political freedom without there first being economic freedom, which is basically the right to work and strive for things that you want and then to own them without fear of those things being stolen by either other individuals in society or probably more likely those things being stolen by the state. Private property rights also promote economic development by strengthening incentives to work. Prosperous societies are based around the incentive to work, the right to own things that you want to own, 
um, all of this creates a very positive incentive for people to work hard in order to better themselves. Without the right to own property, there's arguably very little incentive to make a positive contribution to society. What's the point of working hard for things that you want if somebody else, including the state, is allowed to steal it from you? This was one of the main reasons why Soviet Russia collapsed. Um, in the absence of private property rights, people just gave up. They didn't really see the point in working because they couldn't keep get to keep the fruits of their own labor. They were stolen from them by the state. So you had shops with nothing in them because nothing was being produced. Why bother working hard if the state can steal your output? In societies where private property rights aren't enforced, crime is endemic. Um, this creates, again, problems. Um, people will look to maximize their self-interest. And if the easiest way to owning a BMW is to steal it, uh, people will choose that, that route. Um, crime also causes fear and anxiety, which reduces the non-material standard of living. So in societies where property rights aren't enforced, it's a free for all. People can mug and steal from each other. So in response to that, people resort to living inside prisons of their own making called gated communities. This is all an indirect consequence of a failure to uphold private property rights. In societies where the, the state fails to uphold private property rights, uh, individuals are forced to hire expensive teams of private security. Um, that money that's spent on the private security could have been spent on something else. So, so you can argue that this isn't exactly great for economic development, to live in a lawless society where private property rights are not being upheld. So you could argue that even from a libertarian perspective, the most important thing that the state has got to do is to ensure that private property rights are, uh, are ensured. The police in London in particular are failing in their duty to uphold basic private property rights and uphold the rule of law. As a result of that, there's a knife crime epidemic and thousands of young people are being killed on our streets every year. This is obviously not very good for economic development. We've also had the grooming gang fiascos where the police failed to investigate and uphold the rule of law. The police appear to have different priorities. So you could say that the rule of law is absolutely vital in upholding private property rights. And without that, it's very difficult to have high levels of economic development. It's also important to point out that in high development societies, the equ uh, equality before the law principle is upheld. So people, regardless of their race, gender, sex or anything else, are treated equally under the law. So let's go through some of the logic chains then about how private property rights can create economic development. So the first one is that Private property rights promote economic freedom, uh, which is the idea that you're allowed to work hard uh, in order to buy and own things that you personally want. That obviously creates freedom from servitude, which generates non-material progress, which then creates economic development. Second route through might be that private property rights create a stronger incentive to work. That increases productivity and innovation within society. That then creates long run economic growth uh, caused by increases in LRIS. That generates material progress because the more that society can produce, the more we can consume and therefore the more utility that we can derive from goods and services. And then material progress obviously generates development. 
And the final route through is that private property rights upholding them, you need to have decent law and order. The rule of law has to apply in your society. So if that's the case, you'll have fewer injuries, fewer deaths, fewer physical assaults. You'll have higher life expectancy. Um, you'll have fewer death, uh, thefts rather and physical damage to private property. Also, um, less fear of crime. The psychological effects of that can be quite damaging. So all of that is going to trigger non-material progress, which then creates some more economic development. So this is how you can see why private property rights are so important to economic development. So I know it might seem strange, but how could you evaluate this? What counter arguments could you put forward to justify a view that private property rights might reduce economic development? The most obvious one is to claim that private property rights could end up creating more inequality. Uh, inequality between people that are intelligent and hardworking and private property rights enable those people to accumulate wealth. Um, on the other hand, you've got other people in society who aren't as smart, who aren't as hardworking. Um, in a society where private property rights are, ex um, are respected, this gap between rich and poor will grow. So this is where social justice comes in. Um, according to socialists, what the state should do is use taxation to transfer income and wealth from people that uh, own that uh, income and wealth to other people that don't own it in order to reduce inequality. So using the tax and benefit system and the authoritarian power of the state to reduce inequality. You could argue that that fundamentally flies in the face of private property rights because the state is compelling individuals to transfer their wealth uh, through, to, through to other people in society. So this quote from Murray Rothbard, uh, an American but part of the Austrian School of, the, uh, of Economics sums it up. According to Murray Rothbard, it would be an instructive exercise for the skeptical reader to try to frame a definition of taxation, which does not also include theft like the robber, the state demands money at the equivalent of gunpoint. If the taxpayer refuses to pay, his assets are seized by force. And if he should resist such depredation, he will be arrested or shot if he should continue to resist. So what Rothbard essentially is saying here is that he could make an argument out that taxation itself compromises private property rights because taxation isn't voluntary, it's compulsory. And those that refuse to pay their taxes on the income and wealth that is theirs, their private property, will face a jail sentence at the very least. I think it's also interesting to consider who in society is least likely to respect private property rights. In other words, who in society is more likely to steal your private property? You, know, you might think it will be sort of criminal gangs of, of uh, hoodlums. Or maybe shadowy organisations like the Mafia who run protection rackets. However, in practice, it's mostly politicians who are the worst corporates in terms of uh, inability to respect private property rights. What politicians do is promise one group of people another group of people's property in exchange for their votes. So you think, can think of uh, McGarboy, Stalin, and Chavez, and many, many more politicians, too numerous to mention. Most of these politicians have used nationalisation to steal private assets. Nationalisation is the compulsory purchase of private assets by the state at a price that the state chooses, which is normally a fraction of the market price. 
in the case of both South Africa and Zimbabwe, the state has actually just transferred assets from one group to another um, without compensation. In Venezuela, the state confiscated the assets of US oil companies. And before Hitler murdered six million Jews, he also stole their assets and redistributed them to his clients, the people that had voted Hitler into office, the believers of National Socialism. So who gets to define what justice means in the phrase social justice? Can we trust the politician to define justice according to their own values? Should we grant politicians that much power? Are they trustworthy? According to Austrian economists, we shouldn't do that. Um, as Hayek says here, the idea of social justice is that the state should treat different people unequally in order to make them equal. So what Hayek is basically saying here is that this is fundamentally against economic development. In a civilised, humane society, the state should treat everybody equally, without exception, always. This quote from Walter E. Williams is also spot on. Let me offer you my definition of social justice. I keep what I earn and you keep what you earn. Do you disagree? Well then, tell me how much of what I earn belongs to you and why. Hayek escaped the Nazis. He lived in Vienna at the time of German occupation. So this quote has particular relevance to, to Hayek. Social justice rests on the hate towards those that enjoy a comfortable position namely upon envy. So this was exactly, I think, the situation with the Nazis and the Jews. The Nazis were highly critical of capitalism. They hated the Jews because, according to them, they were too good at this thing that they hated. And um, as far as the Nazis were concerned, their version of social justice involved stealing from Jews, transferring their income and wealth before murdering them. So absolutely despicable. And this is where social, this, uh, using the power of the state to pursue social justice can lead you to, can lead you to death camps and gulags and concentration camps.